Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Sneaker History Podcast. I'm chilling here with Lee Beecroft while I fight off my cat from jumping up on our, on my lap. How you doing, Liz? I'm I'm sure you know cat life. <laughs> yes, I do actually. He's probably scratching at the door right now, trying to get in here. So it's a fun life. <laughs> it's a great one, especially when you lock them out and they're like, "Hey, I'm on the other side of this." I'll never and, let uh, you forget. <laughs> never yeah, ever. Ever. Nope. How's life in Brooklyn today? How you doing? I'm good. Brooklyn's good. Um, the weather's starting to get warmer, which is very nice. I'm very excited for that. Uh, but yeah, a nice, relaxing Sunday. Um, All-Star weekend, so looking forward to watching the game later. And just taking it, laying low. Taking Man. it slow and, yeah. All-Star weekend, unlike any other, but still, it's All-Star weekend. It's great to see LeBron playing after saying, like, ah, I don't know if I want to or not. I think in the back of all our heads, we knew he was going to, but it's just, it's good to see some exhibition game. Um, and that's why you're such a, a special host. I mean, pardon me, special guest. It's because you really bridge so many different things. Sneaker history is passionate about. Basketball would probably be the number one sport amongst us here at the site and podcast. So just the energy of All-Star Weekend. Have you had a chance to go to one before? That is on my bucket list. Um, I feel like every All-Star Weekend, I'm either traveling or I have like other stuff going on. So mm -hmm. um, this year, I was hopeful that I'd be there, but uh, COVID happened. So here I am in Brooklyn today. But that's all good. Yeah, I'm there in spirit, and that's all that matters. What's your favorite All Star Weekend? Is growing up like what's your what's one of your oh, one of your favorite All Star Weekend? Doesn't have to be the end all be all favorite, just one that pops to mind. Probably two thousand and three, just because back then that was probably like the epitome of my life, where basketball really was like everything. And I'll never forget like the T Max, the patent red and blue T Max that dropped for mm -hmm. All Star Weekend. So that, yeah, that's like. Probably one of my favorites. Also, just like, you know, AI, Prime, and all of those guys that I grew up on that I've looked up to and admired. So, yeah, taking it back to the early 2000s, for sure. Land of the Bigs, where you have, like, Dirk, Kevin Garnett, and Tim Duncan all on the same side, just like, and Yao, and Shaq. I know, it's, yep. it's, it's some combination yep. of just crazy height, and that was so much fun. Um, we're going to go back through memory lane. I'm going to come back to Iverson in a moment because you're one of many, many people who, who know Iverson as a special person in their formative years. But um, we're going to be talking about mental health, sneakers, things you like about sneakers, um, how basketball and sport on a larger scale merge with what you do and how that merges with sneakers and kind of just how you found a way to make a ball of loves dribble it and then shoot your shot and make it it feels like you're pretty good at, you're pretty good at that um it's a common theme to have people say that like once you find what you're good at or what you're passionate about find a way to make it like your job and and you'll be successful so let's jump back to iverson i want to say at least six people i know that have come onto this podcast not not with like not withholding in life but why iverson he's like so special to so many people but why do you yeah i i grew up in pennsylvania in a really okay. small town um so just because i'm from pa naturally i grew up a sixers fan um i'm from about an hour north of philly and i think at the time like my parents had signed me up for basketball when i was like three or four so i've Basketball has always been a huge part of my life. Um, and it's really like I, I'm an only child. So it's where I found some of my best friends. Some of my teammates were really family to me. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, really the sport that I I wanted to be an NBA player when I grew up. It wasn't about going to the WNBA. I wanted to be the first female in the NBA. Obviously, that did not happen. <laughs> but I mean, AI at the time was obviously like, you think of Philly back in 99 to 2000, early 2000s, AI is the person that you think of. Obviously, like Matumbo, Eric Snow, 
you name it. But McNabb, but that's the Eagles are a whole different disappointment. Oh. <laughs> so I met Terrell Owens once uh, when he was at the Eagles, which was a whole other story. But nice. AI for me, I think. First and foremost, I had the biggest crush on AI. I wanted to marry AI. He was my boyfriend, husband, you name it. But I also wanted to play like Allen Iverson. I idolized this man. Like, he did no wrong in my eyes. Everything he did on the court, I tried to imitate in my game and how I played. We were the same position, point guard. Um, And what I really loved about AI was just he was so scrappy and Whatever he put his mind to, he would do it. It doesn't matter how much shorter he was than everyone else. It doesn't matter, you know, what his history and his background and life was like growing up. Like when he came to play, he was there and he brought it all on the court and gave no fucks. (laughs) And I think to me, like that really, even off the court, you know, like I think to me, that's really what stood out for me about AI is just his drive, his willpower and being uniquely himself, um, which is something like, you know, at 29, I try to do every single day. And it's something that I, you know, credit him for and kind of instilling in me at a really young age. So, yeah, it's always been AI for me. It's not easy being yourself all the time, is it? Like you, you want to hope or fantasize about being somebody else or living a different life. But I think Alan Iverson like epitomizes like you can only be you. I mean, if, if people like it, great. If people don't, they don't. But there's only one of the one way to roll about it. Um, he is such, I think, an integral part of this All-Star weekend. Like, he was for so many years just like, even if he wasn't, like, scoring the most points that year, let's say Kobe or LeBron or somebody else was getting MVP, like, just, I- Iverson being in the cut was just, like, that's where he belongs, like amongst the pan- like top pantheon of players. And he's a rule breaker in the best way. Um, well, I- I'm curious then. So, like, what, what, were, what were the first, like, sneakers to kind of, like, bridge the gap between basketball and then footwear, like a love for footwear? Was it Iverson's or somebody else? Yeah, I mean, for me, it started with question mids for sure um, because I just wanted to be, like, my idol at the time, everything I did had to be like him from the sweatbands, the armbands, my shorts being insanely too big on me at the time. Um, it really started with question mids. And then, you know, I think as I grew older, that's when I started to dabble in other silhouettes, such as, you know, the T-Mac 2s, Jordan 18s are stand out for me, 17s as well. Um and also skate shoes. Like I grew up, a lot of my friends were guys. And so it was always like DCs, Entenies, Vans, um, soaps as well. Like I can remember being in the playground with my soaps on, busting my ass a couple of times. But um, it was kind of like this keep up or shut up mentality that I had. I never really got along with a lot of the girls that I grew up with. They were, you know, involved in like cheerleading and other things that I just like wasn't into at the time and all of my friends were guys so I had to keep up and sneakers was also kind of a segue for me to be able to keep up with them um not only like athletically but also through just what we were into at the time uh Mm -hmm. and then shocks I would say too was kind of the segue from like a basketball sneaker into like a lifestyle shoe as I got older um And it's hard. Like, thinking back, I don't even remember, like, which models I had. Um, But, yeah. You just named all the important ones. Yeah. Shocks were a big part of my childhood, too, which is kind of funny. So we're talking, like, runner shocks, not Vince Carter shocks, right? Like, NZs. Yeah. I mean, like, I I used to have, like, the team, whatever the team uh, shock was, like, when they used to do the team colorways. Oh, I know. Yeah. Uh, And then... Uh, yeah and then eventually it evolved into like a runner um yeah that's just such a fun i mean soaps those are the ones that you could grind on right Mm -hmm. yep yep this the novel ideas of everything you kind of listed off there so you got shocks which is definitely a novel idea you know you have the questions but then soaps 
I mean, it sounds like you could have even messed around with some like Chris Webber Dada's or something. Something. Oh, I had the spinners. Yeah, I had those. <sighs> That's magical. Competition is a great thing because you had every brand. I mean, obviously, soaps aren't trying to be basketball shoes, but just making a lane. You, you saw Heelys pop off. So like, hey, might as well make a grinding specific version. I wonder what kids have now. Have you seen what kids? Is it still? I don't, I don't know, know what they do. I don't even think kids are like into like it's weird. I feel like a lot of Gen Z and maybe I'm completely off on this, but I feel like they're more into sneakers for the resale purposes, not necessarily because of the love and the stories that we grew up on. Um, but also we grew up in a time where social media and like the resale market was not really a thing. So mm -hmm. it's very different. That's tough. If if roles were reversed and you were that age now, like it's hard not to be enticed by making $200 if you're 14, 15, 16. That's like a lot of money. That's a come up. Yeah. And it also like, you know, the people that a lot of these teenagers are looking up to, like, you know, Billie Eilish, who's dripped out constantly. You know, you mm -hmm. want to be like your idols. And back then, like our idols, if they were, it wasn't as in your face as it is today. So it's not really that urge to try and get all this money to be able to afford the same things that, you know, those people are wearing. That's an interesting take because obviously the jewelry is a whole different category. You couldn't afford that. But for the most part, it was like acquirable jeans and t-shirts and then sneakers that you could in theory go buy that afternoon. Of course, people have always had exclusive crazy sneakers. So back in the early 2000s, there were people with samples and stuff too. But for the most part, you see something you liked on somebody you thought was cool, you could go get something really similar and, and not have to be like a fake Gucci like Billie Eilish. Like, oh, I, I can't afford that jumpsuit. I'm going to go buy where, – where, where would you go? Canal Street to go buy like a fake? <laughs> I guess, yeah. 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 That's difficult. Yeah. And then to go online and be made fun of by your peers because, yeah, Gen Z is savage with that at times. So it's – um. It's a tough world these kids are growing up in. I feel for them a lot. So I'm curious then, what does, like, what's, what's your take with what you do? So you're, a, how would you best describe what you do? Like, what's your title? Yeah. New title coming up or however. So, yeah, I mean, full, I'm a licensed clinical social worker in LCSW um, who is a psychotherapist in private practice. And then I just kind of describe all the other stuff I do as like digital, like a digital creator. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really know how to group all that I do into like a short sentence, but yeah, I do a lot of different things and I really like all of the things that I do. Commas are okay. Commas yeah. are good in money, <laughs> titles, whatever you want to do with it. So then with those hats in your bag, how do you see, like, are kids going to be okay growing up in this sneaker community where it's just like you're going to get roasted if you try to get something similar that's not the authentic, but you can't get the authentic? Like, are we putting kids in, like, like precarious situations through sneakers? Uh, I wouldn't even necessarily, you know, just say it's only sneakers. I think it mm -hmm. has a lot to do with social media um and like hype culture in general uh and it's hard like these kids they're not working full-time they're not making money and it's like at a point how do you teach kids to create a healthy relationship with that but also to be realistic about what's attainable when you're 15 16 17 and not mm -hmm. working full-time um and it's hard it's hard uh so, yeah, I think there's a lot of things that play into it, uh, social media being a, a big one. Uh, and just, yeah, like the having access to like literally anything and everything, all different types of information and, you know, the ability to go online and, and say really amazing things, but on, on the reverse, like really hurtful things to someone from behind a computer screen where you have really no repercussions of that. Um, and for some people, even creating fake accounts and being trolls, you know, like it, it happens and yeah, it affects a lot of them. Very yeah. 
I'm very curious what that's going to look like. And I'm sure studies are being done now where it's like, what is this going to look like 30 years from now when these kids are grown up? But I don't even think of like the money thing. Like, we're adults. We have jobs. But being a teenager and lusting over things and not having a means to get it just because you're a kid like this, no situation really faulting you. Just you're a kid. <laughs> you're supposed to be going to school and not worrying about Gucci right now. So that's that's interesting. Mental health is such an interesting conversation that keeps getting brought up. I think in sports more and more over the past couple of years, it's becoming less taboo to say, hey, I need help or there's something going on behind my scenes. Like, I need something here. And that's one of the more powerful, I think, transitions we're seeing as like a culture of people, human beings living in a society, being able to say, hey, mental health is okay and I need help. So like, what's the importance, not in sneakers, but just in general, like what's the importance of having like good mental health or like, how does somebody start? Like, I don't see, I don't even know how to really phrase that question in the best way, but like why mental health and, and why is it so important in 2021? Yeah, I mean, I think at the end of the day, we all have to come to terms with the fact that every single one of us has mental health. We also all have physical health. Mental health and mental illness or having a mental disorder are two different things. So, you know, just as much as we take care of our physical health to kind of prevent any physical conditions from happening to ourselves, it's very similar with mental health. We have to take care of our mental health on the regular to make sure that we are in a good state of mind um, to be able to function at work, school, with friends, with family. Um, so yeah, I think it, it's, it seems pretty simple, but at the same time, it's, it's hard because like you said, it is really taboo to talk about feelings and emotions. It's, it's not easy to go up to someone and be like, hey, I'm feeling really down today and I constantly am crying. Whereas, you know, going up to someone and being like, ah, I don't feel good my stomach really hurts, like it's so much more common and accepted in society today. But when you think of it on a broader, you zoom out and you look at it from a broader perspective, it, it's pretty much the same thing. So I don't, you know, we have to get to a point as a society where we can feel comfortable saying that to other people, but also accepting that it's normal, accepting that everyone at some point in our lives feels, you know, a range of emotions and that we are prepared to support people when that happens. Because I think that's also what plays into the taboo is that, you know, when someone comes to us with some serious mental health concerns or, you know, whatever they're going through, we don't really know how to respond. Um, so we often say, oh, just keep your head up or um, just stay positive And, you know, like, no shit. <laughs> like, that's like the worst thing to say to someone in those moments. Um, so I think we need, you know, as a as a society, as a country, as a, you know, world to figure out uh, more actionable items when it comes to mental health and supporting one another. But that's great. So, I mean, what does it look like to bridge mental health and your job? Like your, your training, it's not, not, not just your job. It's like a, it's bigger than a job for you. I'm, I'm guessing, but it's like, how do you bridge that world two sports and I guess one step further into sneakers like how do those all come together in your life like how do you make that work I think for me it, it first started with it just being who I am like I love sneakers I grew up playing sports and I am a therapist it's like literally my three world, worlds kind of crashing into one and for the longest time, especially when it came to social media or even within my career, I always felt a little bit on the outside. Um, I'm not the stereotypical therapist. And I know there's a lot of other therapists out there like me. But when you see, you know, therapists portrayed in like movies or in like just different public, video games, yeah. yeah, video games, anything, any like public forum, um, they're always kind of like buttoned up. They use this like very clinical language. And, you know, there there have been so many people who have experiences where they said like, I just feel like my therapist doesn't get me. And 
I feel like that as a therapist sometimes with my colleagues. And, you know, nothing against them. They're amazing and they're very talented. But, like, you know, we are all, at the end of the day, as a therapist, all of us are all human beings too. We also have our own interests and hobbies outside of our careers. And mine just happened to be sneakers and sports. So, you know, what I started to see over t- the last couple of years is, you know, talking to friends, talking to families and other people in, in different communities that I'm involved in is that was a very similar sentiment is that, you know, we don't really necessarily feel like our therapist gets it or understands why social media might be a, a big impact in our life or why I love sneakers so much or, you know, whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of what normalized it for me was to say like, okay, you know, I love basketball. And when I go and play basketball, it's a way I kind of release a lot of frustration or anger or emotions. But when you think of mental health and therapists telling you how to take care of yourself, it's usually like meditation or deep breathing or like these textbook practices, um, which for me personally, I don't really always do. Uh, I find my own creative ways. So that's kind of where I try to connect the dots is by showing people that, you know, you can use sneakers to help positively impact your mental health. You can use sports. And on the flip side, like, you know, as a professional athlete, like as a fan of the NBA, you know, keeping in mind that these men are and women in the WNBA are human beings. They have personal lives outside of this career path. And, you know, they are trying to go on the court and play their best every night, but it's not always easy to not let some of the other stuff kind of come onto the court with you. So trying to also educate people like, you know, just we're, we're all human at the end of the day and to keep that in mind. So could it be something like go wear a pair of sneakers that makes you happy and go shoot hoops for a half an hour? Could that be? If it works for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If that means looking down at a a pair of shoes and those shoes serve as like a reminder that of a happy memory or, you know, a certain color makes you feel good or you feel confident in yourself because you have these shoes on that you really like. It's all about the emotions that they evoke for people, you know, and um, even cleaning a pair of shoes, like people talk about mindfulness, you know, and often meditation is associated with mindfulness, but something as simple as picking up a scrubbing brush and some Jason Mark and going and cleaning your shoes is mindfulness. You know, you're focused in that moment, you're cleaning the dirt from your shoes, you're focused on what you're doing and not thinking about the other stressors in our lives. It's really just about being present in that moment. And so, you know, if you can go play basketball and shoot hoops for 30 minutes and you're fully invested in that moment and it's helping you, then so be it. That's really what it's all about is finding our own unique ways to take care of ourselves that work for us. Cleaning thinkers is why cleaning sneakers is why you're a professional. It's like, dang, man, like I, I wouldn't even thought of that, but it's so true. You can't be typing like you're in there. You're in that zone unless you want to like mess up and get your suede um, mess up and you're not being mindful. That's super interesting. Could it also be something like go confront the pair of sneakers in your closet that like has a negative connotation, or like negative feel? Yeah. Yeah. And if that's something that you need to release, if there's like an, a, a an attachment with those shoes for whatever reason, you know, and you've gotten to the point where you're ready to say goodbye. Sometimes it could be really cathartic or therapeutic to like shred them up, you know, and if that's something you want to do or sell them, just Mm -hmm. sell them or get rid of them or donate them, you know, whatever it might be. But yeah, like, you know, even with customizing sneakers, like it's not something I personally do. I'm not like the most artistic person, but I think that's amazing. You know, because you're really tapping into your creativity and not only getting inspiration uh, from the process, but it's also, you know, a form of self-care. And I think, like, you know, we need to think outside the box when it comes to this kind of stuff. So that's kind of what I try to help people understand. Hmm, I might have to go office space on a pair of old Air Force Ones in my closet and just beat them up. Um, Literally, that's... That's that's a funny mental image. I love that. Uh, but it's good that we acknowledge both like the happy good times that like a sneaker could bring or like the negative or sad times. 
I want to segue that into the Nike um, Air Max 270 React collab you have that was called In My Feels. That's such like a a common just like internet term nowadays. Like why why is that important to you? Because we kind of touched on it a bit, but like why In My Feels? I think honestly at the time it was definitely a play off of Drake, um, the Drake song. Um, it was like a popular song at the time and mm -hmm. it worked first <sighs> at the end of the day it worked. So that's what matters. Yeah. I didn't really think too much into the name, honestly. Like it was more of like the design behind it, but um, it made sense. It was relevant at the time. And, you know, when you think about it, like being in your feels, people often associate that with like being sad or mad or, you know, the negative things, but in your feels could be being really happy or excited, you know, it could be any feeling. So that's something I tried it. I tried to communicate through that release is that, you know, in your feels doesn't always have to be a, a negative connotation. Okay. So I'm going to use that to play a little game with you. Okay. <laughs> based around in my feels. So I'm going to ask you to give me a sneaker that makes you happy. What's, what's a sneaker that like, is, you think of a sneaker and it's like, that shoe makes me happy. Uh, answer four. Okay. Any specific colorway or just all-star uh, weekend, you got, you're thinking about it. Maybe the step over colorway, which I don't have. Uh, One day. But yeah. That what fair. sneaker makes you angry? Like for any reason, it's angry. Uh, what do you think? That's a tough one. Um, Old, looking at new. my collection right now. Currently at Dunk. Because you can't get, why does the Dunk make you mad? Because you can't, can't get them, but also because I think it's now just a little played out. Um, yeah. And I just, it's a shoe that a couple of years ago you could find in Ross for $30. And now you can't get a pair. Um, that's the, so that's the damn truth. Makes me a little angry just to think about the evolution over the last couple of years. How about a sad one? So not angry, but anger and sad Ooh. are two different feelings. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking at my, I'm just looking over at my shoes now. Um. Or maybe one that's not in there that makes you sad because you didn't get it. What's a recent miss that you're like, man, I wish I had that one? Probably my ultimate grail would be a Tom Sachs Mars Yard. The, yeah. The, the overshoe or the first one? The or? first one or the 2.0, either of them. Um, yeah, I don't really care for the overshoe as much, but That's. Yeah kind of like the dunks but on a whole different scale that shoe has no business being like four thousand dollars however much it is now has no business being that much how about a sneaker that makes you hungry there's so many food themed shoes the, the bacons <laughs> yes very timely with I that know. one i know that's very a good soon. one okay i'm trying to think of what's what's one more good feeling trying to for a more positive one other than just happy excited excited what are you excited about um i am proud i would say um a new balance 992 okay uh i just it's a very versatile shoe and i think it's something that i just really love what new balance has been doing the last two or three years um so it makes me excited for their future. That's How about one more corny. that just came to mind? <laughs> New Balance is such on a rise right now. You're yeah. one of many people who are just like, I'm digging it. Yeah, yeah. And that's a powerful thing. What is it just that 990? Like what's what's brought you into the game of New Balance? Um, Honestly, like just like comfort wise, like it's a shoe that like I could pair with literally anything. Uh, if it's like a V4, a V5, a 9 uh 990 any of them um and then also i just really love the collaborations that they've been putting out um with todd Steider, the duck camos are super net were super nice um and i feel like they're 
it just yeah the ald the 550s that they just re-released i Fire. was happy to see them bring those back and i like the sentiment of like the international friendship through basketball um yeah it just brought a lot of happy memories back so it makes me excited for their future to see like what um what's to come that's so cool we got a couple different feelings at a new balance there then yeah. so i have one more last one for sure the last one what sneaker makes you feel nostalgic oh the jordan 17 and that was the instant answer why is that the instant answer i have like a personal story with that shoe that i think i yeah i'm like it's, it's a story that will stay with me forever and it's it's like a really funny it's kind of silly it's not even like a really like heartfelt story but it's yours. um yeah it's mine and it kind of last year it came full circle so the story i guess i'll share a little bit of it is fifth grade you know east bay <laughs> catalog circling the shoe a million times i think it dropped in like the summer going into fifth grade and my parents were like I'm not spending $200 on a shoe for you or whatever the price was at the time and I was like mom I need the briefcase like I need the, the briefcase so she was like all right they're your back to school shoes I'll get them for you we have we can't wear them until August comes so she got them for me and then by the time school hit I had outgrew them I had a growth spurt no and <laughs> so she ends up giving them to my teacher in fifth grade, who was this like petite little woman who thought they were cool. And my mom just like gave them to her. And I've never really let her live it down. And then last, not this past Christmas, the year before, my mom found like a OG pair um, in, a, in my size and gifted them to me. So yeah, that was cool. With the briefcase? With the briefcase Man. and the, the, the CD and the team, the team Jordan. CD. Yes. Yeah. Was she expecting you to go to school like if those shoes fit like with the Jordan briefcase like going to class like with the backpack and a briefcase or like the briefcase is your backpack like you've sold you I feel like you sold it with the inclusion of a briefcase like back to school mom briefcase like what's <laughs> what's the reasoning there? I don't yeah. know I mean my mom probably at this point isn't surprised with anything that I do um I've always been like the kid who just never followed the, the crowd. So mm -hmm. she, I think she's proud of that. And I think if I wanted to go with this, to school at the time with the briefcase, she would have supported it and been like, hell yeah, do it. Put That's whatever you want in there. <laughs> so yeah, it's cool. That was such a time to be a teen, preteen, because I would circle, I mean like every jersey on a page and be like, so... I'm going to get one of these, right? Like I, I circled like every single one in this catalog. Like you're going to hit me with a Jersey. And then I would get one that isn't circled. And like, man, it was, <laughs> and then as an adult, the one they got me was definitely just on sale. And they went to the store, didn't go to East Bay. Like I understand their logic, but the 17, 18, such a, such a great, t 18s were my first pair of Jordans. So I ended up getting 17s at an outlet. I think after the 18s, I believe weird Nike stuff going on at that time but just so much fun circling and hoping another feel hope. I hope I'm getting these parents. Came with the towel and I remember bringing the towel with me thinking like, I'm going to like get my sweat off. Someone stole the towel. I would have too. Like, honestly, as a teenager, I'm not mad about it. As an adult, I'm not mad about it. But te that's what teenagers are going to do. Who knows? But yeah, I still have the brush too. Um, and the pair. Yeah, my parents were doing garage sales. Like, whatever you do, do not get rid of those 18s. Um, you didn't miss out on stuff though. So like, all the shoes you've brought up as like meaning something. You would just roll up and get like 18s were they were the cool new jordan model and people to this day love the cool new jordan model i love the 35 34s are cool etc cetera, etc cetera. but like you would just roll up and get it what's it like 
nowadays from like a mental health perspective the inability to get sneakers and, and i'm not talking just nike but the adidas has their confirmed app every boutique has their own little internet setup so it could be any culprit nowadays like is it is it bad for our mental health taking all these losses <laughs> I think it really depends on our ability to function outside of it. Like is, if mm -hmm. it's getting to a point where we're not doing anything else for ourselves and it's the only thing we're focusing on and we have like almost a problem with hoarding too much shoes or, you know, we're getting super angry and throwing and slamming things and we take an L, then maybe it's time to like give yourself a break and just kind of check in with yourself. But I think, you know, it's normal. Like you get that epinephrine and norepinephrine rush you know you're trying to you know I, even for me like my hands are all sweaty like right before you know I have my two other I have like two private practice phones so mm -hmm. luckily I have three try three three attempts for sneakers app I feel like I'm so hip but I know like there's people oh. out there with way more than me you got your burners um, <laughs> you're making it work <laughs> I'm yeah and I'm like trying my hands are sweaty and it's like it gives you that sense of hope Maybe this time, you know, maybe even though, you know, like your track record sucks and it's never going to hit, but it's like that what if feeling, you know, and especially after this last year, like we need that sense of hope. We need that um, feeling of something good might happen. Uh, and then if you get the L and hopefully you're able to carry on with your day and not let those feelings kind of follow you throughout the rest of your day or week, but yeah, I think part of it is it's part of the game. So I'm purposely trying to ask questions where it's just like you don't have to preface it with like this is not a real consultation. Um, what is so I have some like sneaker problems or some sneaker things that I think correlate with either positive or negative mental health things. So I'm going to shoot an example at you and I'm going to get your vibe for it. So you just said hoarding. So like, can sneakers, like, how can one learn to step away from sneaker hoarding from like, like looking within themselves, like, all right, I have a problem in here with how many Jordan ones I have. Like, how can one start to identify that or? Yeah. I think it's really just trying to get a better understanding of your relationship with sneakers and what exactly it is that you feel that attachment to. Um, and, you know, for everyone, it's different. It really depends. And it, a lot of it has to do with probably past relationships or past or not relationships with past experiences or past traumas that may have happened in our life that whatever we those feelings we were lacking or, or not receiving, we're getting that with our shoes. Um, and so it's like kind of walking this fine line of what's a healthy attachment versus what's not a healthy attachment. And you know, having like a huge collection of shoes and keeping your functioning and your, you know, not going into crazy amounts of debt and, you know, you're still able to like do everything else in your life. That's, that's normal and that's healthy. But when it gets to a point where sneakers and I don't know, fitted hats and uh, I don't know, Funko Pops, Bear Brick, like you're collecting every single thing of everything that drops, like then it might be a good time to like, all right, let me take a step back and assess like, what about it? Do I actually like this or am I doing it because of the rush it's giving me, you know, when I do take a win or the attachment that I have to these objects? Um, and where can I find those feelings within other fa facets of my life that might be healthier um, than what I'm doing now? Mm -hmm. Could I maybe tone down from four things I collect down to two type? Yeah deal yeah and I think that's realistic like you know you know when people talk about like quitting nicotine or you know any type of thing that you're maybe addicted to or hooked on or have a strong attachment to going cold turkey and just going like zero to a hundred is like not realistic so <sighs> no, it's, it's not those baby steps you know what any goal you're trying to achieve it's not like you, it's not going to happen overnight you have to think about like the smart um, incremental steps it takes to get there and celebrate those small victories on the way. Because if you don't, you're going to just set yourself up for failure. Mm -hmm. 
So it's not always necessarily a bad thing to collect sneakers if like your rent's paid and like I'm trying to spin this to somebody who is listening and like I'm still going to keep collecting people. Like give me something positive here. So like you're not doing anything wrong if your life's in order and you have a thousand pairs of sneakers, right? Yeah. Yeah. If you're social functioning, work functioning, your bills are paid, you're doing everything you got to do and you're feeling good about it. Keep keep going, keep doing it. If it's not affecting any the other facets of your life, then it's not it's not hurtful. Mm-hmm. What's a couple pairs that have been in your rotation then? We're gonna round out here with just some like more sneaker fun. So I see you looking at your wall over there. What are some pairs that have been finding their way onto your feet more often than not? Uh, lately, I've been wearing the Solehi Bembury Anta twos. Um, <sighs> That, yeah that, can you it grab it is it close enough to grab yeah let me go One yeah second. go for it because yeah now that's a shoe i know a lot of people have seen i know a lot of people have seen this on the internet but may not have put the dots together um so i was very lucky i follow the be a sponge account and i had commented like i signed up for the passcode it didn't you know, I got the passcode by the time I got on. I think I was like in a session. And by the time I got done my session, they were gone. And then, like, someone had, like, replied to my comment on one of the posts saying, like, oh, there's women's sizes available. And I went on right away. And I don't know what happened, but I, I got lucky and I got this pair. And I've been – they're the most comfortable, like, shoe I have worn in a very long time. I actually just went on StockX and got an, another colorway. Um I'm obs- I'm obsessed. I love them. Um, and they're Antas. Yeah. Woo. And they are. And I I've... like I didn't even want the white. It was just what they had available, and I you know lucked out, and I'm happy because they're. I've never seen the all white. I've seen a couple yeah. different, but that white's clean. Yeah. That cage yeah. system. Yeah. I don't know what he did. I mean, he used to be the Louis Vuitton head designer, right? I think Versace. Versace. Yeah. Yeah. But there's some crazy vibe yeah. in that shoe. Yeah, it's everything he does, I think, is so intentional and there's such a story behind it. Um, yeah, I think like any, everything he touches is phenomenal. So, very happy to have these and excited for the other colorway to come in because I'm literally going to be like living in these all summer. They're amazing. So, here's a hot take for everybody concerned and maybe beating themselves down mentally for like losing on sneakers all the time there's other shoes out there in the world because that's a pair you might not see obviously it's a little more coveted so it's not going to be something you just walk into a store and buy but you just said it's insanely comfortable in the most uncomfortable shoes you've worn in a while nothing else looks like that shoe so maybe instead of like beating your head against a wall like trying on sneakers over and over again and taking your 18th l why don't you go on another platform or something and try getting a pair of those or something like there's other shoes in the world. Like you can look around and you can be very pleasantly surprised. Like that might not have been a shoe. Like you, you were never drawn to Anta before that, right? No, not really. Um, no. Now that you're on your feet though, can't change it. I have to say the same thing. I've been wearing these on these on uh cloud ultras. Like, this is their lifestyle type shoe, and it's still not super lifestyle It's still very techy, but I tried to wear my UNLV Dunks yesterday, and they were the single most uncomfortable shoes I've worn in a very long time. That shoe was not made right. It's like straight up, it feels like I was wearing two lefts, not happening. This might look a little more techy, a little dorky, whatever. I don't think it's dorky, but to somebody else it might be, but the single most comfortable thing I've worn this week. And probably two weeks. So it's like there's other shoes more than dunks. Like you said, you could buy them for $30 a couple of years ago. It's not that serious. Chill out. Maybe take these opportunities to go try a nice Anta shoe or an on. What's give me one more pair before we leave. Like what's what's one more uh, pair? The forums, the eighty fours. I'm yes. actually really happy that Adidas brought those back. Um and I, I hope that they don't overdo it. I really hope that they keep the like the rollout of 
in 2021 of the forums like you got the blue pair the white and blue or... yeah actually let me grab them <laughs> i should have told you this beforehand normally i give people a heads up like hey we're gonna be trying to show shoes in hand but i just hit liz last second man you got little baby feet yeah i'm seven men seven and a half so i have the blue the vintage um and then these were the icy park beyonce collab which i'm not beyonce fans don't come at me but i'm not the biggest like beyonce person yeah you don't have to be uh but these are very very nice um and then they did the lows which was like a new york exclusive uh those are super clean yeah and they my friend yaya actually i you had to like find her scan her phone in order to get a pair and yeah these are these are all right and then they just sent me the lows um yeah hold up so what was that process that's like a real kind of like limited sneaker thing like yeah uh that's some new york shit no one else gets (laughs) they did like a competition with a couple people in new york and hold it up a little bit whoever sold the most pairs uh essentially won and then proceeds went to a charity and so my friend yaya was uh doing it i hit her i hit her up and met up and i bought a pair and i'm not even like a nick person or a met person i'm a philly diehard through and through so the new york touch to them doesn't really do too much for me i'm sorry anyone in new york that's listening don't hate me but uh I think the the rollout for these was what really got me. Is just like, it was cool to see that they were giving back, and it was really small. It was like a small scale thing. Yeah. Uh, and it's like they they represent the five boroughs. So on the back, it actually has like. Oh, I see it. The boroughs. Yeah. Uh, and you can see the five on the tongue. That's so clean. Is that black or like a dark navy along black. the blue? Yeah. It's oh black. man. And then this is like a 3M material here. Uh, and then this is like a um, chenille. Yeah. See, sneakers can still be fun sometimes. I, I, I'll bitch about them not being that fun. But I've never seen those before. You go swipe your, I mean, scan your friend's phone, help a good cause, something limited. And the, the, um, the Ivy Park stuff, it looks different enough to the the OG or the vintage looking form you had there too, but still like a little spice to it. So yeah. that's all, those are three very different takes on the same shoe. Yeah. And that's what makes me feel excited. Yeah. Yeah. So it was cool. Um, fun times. <laughs> that's great. So that's kind of the end of our episode, Liz. Like what's some things you're working on? Is there anything you want to plug? Like we're at the end of a hot ones episode. What are you working on? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm in private practice now in New York State. So if you're in New York and you need a therapist, hit me up. Um, and then I have some projects coming out in May for Mental Health Awareness Month and a nice mm-hmm. little collab with someone. I, I won't say who, but you can probably connect the dots. It's a podcast that I've been on before um, with his brand. So I'm very excited to see that roll out and have people see what we've worked on because I think it's going to be useful um, and impactful. So, yeah. And we're excited to see it. If you don't know, um, Liz has done a couple different collabs. You did one with LeBron and Unknown, his shop Unknown, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. And then the Nike stuff. Mm-hmm. There's another one I'm missing, right? Yeah, the hundreds. The hundreds. Yeah, last May. So you're not new to it. We're very excited to see um about when will we get more information about that hopefully april ish um we're all we're in production now we're just waiting for production samples to get back and then uh hopefully we'll be start starting to tease some of the collection whoop de whoop that's awesome where can they find you online what's your handle um liz the letter b and then croft like tomb raider and Mm -hmm. uh that's yeah on all like tomb raider That's some 90s stuff right there. That's beautiful. Well, Liz, I appreciate your time. I appreciate you sharing a little bit about your story and sneakers you like, how they intertwine with mental health. I said twine. How they um, intersect with mental health and all that great stuff. It was so much fun having you. Thank you. Make sure you're following her. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you back. All righty, everybody. Have a good day. Thanks for tuning in.
nice. So 